we really have come to this point where law is, is almost completely lost. It's virtually unknown in the halls of education and the associations. I think it's important that, that we start sort of building a, a thesis that establishes law it, itself, not law based on the educational institutions of today, uh, not law based simply on the political philosophy of history, not law based on on degrees or or who claims to to know law, but law that's fact based rather than rather than institution based. Many societies across the world where law is is simply whatever those in power say. Law is is the edict of p bodies of people in authority that have order followers uh, with guns that will enforce their edicts with violence. Law has had this problem for a long time, and it's, it's very important, I think, that we use our ability to communicate in the mediums that we have to, to establish what is law in the simplest possible terms, not in legalese, not in, in law school terms. The legal profession in the United States in, and many other nations is really taught manipulation. They're taught court rules. They're taught uh, ways to control, ways to deceive. But defending law, defending the defendant in a criminal case is, is not something that that most attorneys do. Uh, ensuring due process is not something that judges do. We could debate about the nuances, right, of what laws should be, but I think it's better that we simply establish a reason. We, if we establish a reason for law, if we establish a basic understanding of law, we can bypass so much of that. Now, today, right now, uh, I may be derided for, for the things that I'm going to say because I'm not a member of, of the clubs and of the institutions, and I don't recognize the institutions that promote lawlessness and the associations that promote lawlessness as being the defining principles of law itself. I want us to go back to the human rights, to the natural rights. Do we establish it on history? History is good, uh, but it, it can't alone be the establishment of, of ultimate truth. Do we establish it on, on the times, right? Do we say, well, the people have a right to make whatever law they want? Uh, in a democracy or a republic or whatever whatever you think it is you want? And, and the answer is also no. Do we establish it on, on religion? Okay, the believer might say, well, the religious institution is the best suited to make law. I am a, a Christian and I do recognize the inherency of my rights as, as coming from the creator. I'm not going to make my argument on that today. I'm not going to make my presentation of law itself on that today because not everyone believes as me. And so while I may say, well, I believe and I have faith in what I believe, that's not enough for me to establish that. And I hope to present that to you. So while I may be scoffed at today by, by those who, who want to promote the, the current uh, statutory law that we see in, in this nation or in others, uh, that may not be the case uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago from now. The current legal system that is in my time is untenable. It's unsustainable, it's unlawful, and it cannot last. When we're, when we're picking up the rem remains of that, you know, when we're trying to pull it all back together and, and put something back together to bring peace and order, if, if the people understand law, if the individual understands law and their rights and they value those for themselves and their neighbor, there is, there's peace. Uh, peace is not created by the size of your government. Uh, it's, it's not even created really by the type of government. There's certainly structures of society that tend to be better and worse historically, but really it comes down, I believe, and I'm seeing this more and more, to the individual. And I think as history goes forward, when we're past this, we can look back and, and see that. And so I'm going to try and present simple fundamentals of law in a way that, that if I'm still here 20, 30, 40 years from now, I can look back and not see a person who is, who is egotistical, who is absurd, who's uneducated. I'm not here to present highly educated philosophy. I'm just here to offer, uh, for your consideration, law itself. When people think about, about law, 
uh, in, in, in a current societal sense, we tend to think of, well, what is the law? What's on the books? What did your elected official say? What did the Supreme Court say of, of whatever nation you're in or whatever kind of government body you're dealing with? Law historically has, has looked to the king or to, to the parliament or to the Congress and said, well, these are the lawmakers. And then we have the law enforcers and they follow the orders of the lawmakers and the, the edicts of the judges. Who, who confirm the lawmakers' actions, and then we have law, and we must follow that law to be good members of society. I would submit that, that that's a farce. It's simply a way to control individuals. Law goes back to the fundamental rights. And so when you talk about uh, the lawmaker, when and if the Congress is necessary, let's say, and there's many people that would debate the type of government we should have, but Let's say you had a legislative body and their job is to make law, but what people completely fail to understand most of the time because they're not taught it, not because they're unable to understand it, it's because it's not promoted, it's, it's worked out of our societies, is that those lawmakers, they don't actually make law. A, a, a legislative body can only legislate within the confines of law. And what we're going to define here is the confines of law, not so much what the rules should be for a legislative body if one exists, but what the, the standards are for everyone, whether they're a member of a legislative body or an individual, what, what defines the nature of law? It's not legislators, it, it's, not, it's not judges, uh, it's not opinion, it's not the democracy of the collective. That's not what defines law. Let's talk about what is law. And I want everybody to kind of ask themselves where you're sitting in, in time or place right now. What is law to you? If you were to make a thesis, long or short, on law, how would you define law? And once we can agree on the fundamentals of law, the rest comes together. We can, we can share that. We can educate our children with that. And we can pass that on and have a standard because right now that standard has been washed away. Okay, so let's take it down to its, its fundamental common denominator, and I want to keep this as simple as possible. Uh, you have the individual, the human being. Most human beings, uh, myself and I'm sure you included, would agree that your life is, is your own, which, which then carries through the argument of, well, anyone who is a human being, has, their life is, is absolutely their own. From conception to grave, your life is yours. Now, if you agree that your life is yours, if you don't, if you agree that someone else should be able to control your life and decide when it ends arbitrarily or at their own whims, uh, at that point, you probably should, should stop this video because the fundamental basis for law is the individual. I think most of you would agree that, that I don't have the right to kill you, to murder you, okay? You have life. And if no one has a right to take the life, then the logical discussion is, well, what is included in that, right? What do you need to sustain that life? Let's say someone doesn't have a right to, to murder you, but if they locked you in a room with no food or water to where you died, would, would that be murdering you, right? They've prevented you from sustaining your life. I think we would all agree that, yes, that would certainly be to murder you or to kill uh, w without, without cause, uh, and and we'll come to cause later. But I want to establish this this fundamental basis. We would all agree that I don't have the right to use lethal force to take your stuff, or that I don't have a right to place you in a position, or tie you to a wall, or lock you in a cement room to where you decease because you can no longer sustain your life. Which means you have the right to sustain your life but not to, to take away the sustenance of another's life. So I'm, I'm building, I'm taking a building block. I'm not trying to be facetious in any way here. I'm taking a building block from the ground up. Okay, so if you have your life, you have the right to sustain your life, uh, then you have to have the means to collect the things to sustain your life that is, is recognized in political philosophy for hundreds and hundreds of years and is relevant in the history of, of the United States Constitution, the, the constitutions of many other nations, the political philosophy of, of many respected scholars on law. 
uh, regardless of whether they had gone to an institution. History cares little for the institution. Uh, the words of, of truth are always borne up throughout history based on their fundamental truth, not based on whether the person uh, communicating them had gone to an institution or had a degree or was recognized by the king. So if, if we say, well, yes, I agree I have life, I agree I have uh, the right to my life, the right to sustain that life, and as such, I, I have to have the right to gather what I need to sustain that life. So looking at, at where we are on the planet on a, a simple terms, We've just bypassed uh, borders. Uh, we've just bypassed constitutions. We've just bypassed uh, legislative bodies. We've just bypassed statutes. That's not to say that these never have a place, but to truly define law, we have to go down to the root of it and find something that we can all come together on, that we can all agree on, that has nothing to do with faction or party or, or scholarly institutions in particular, right? We have to come together. So we've established life, sustenance or food, uh, warmth, everything connected to it, right? And liberty, or as often historically referred to life, liberty, and property, right? Because you have your life, you have to sustain your life with your property, right? The roof over your head, the, the, the wood to keep you from freezing to death, the apples off the tree, and then liberty. You have to have your liberty to go and do that. So anyone in, in just a few minutes can define to the, the, most, the most pompous judge or the, the poorest pauper, what is the fundamental foundation of law? It's life, liberty, and property, and here is why. And then from there, practical application, right? How do you get property? What makes something your property? Uh, what is your right to defend your property? And we're going to go on and we're going to try and establish a basis for law. We're going we're gonna to build a series, but we're going to try and keep it simple. We're going to try and keep this down to a, a selection of episodes that can really be boxed up. And, and I think others that, that have a grasp on law and as they understand this should do the same. I think those of us who, who care about our neighbor, who love our neighbors, who care about uh, peace in, in society and justice uh, and the fundamental essences of law, we need to kind of form a thesis because law in our current society is, is being washed away by propaganda, by politics, by, by force when, it, when push comes to shove. And we have to have something that can supersede that in, in the long term. And I think that's the goal here. And I, I hope that uh, this will be some small contribution to that. So 